the beginning of a business empire. Nothing but a toilet and a youth club. A constant boil on my bum. How's your foot there? Is it all good? Work now till you go back to college. I'm fixing you up with a job with your uncle. Like me friends. Bring us in. I will. Only you have to know how to squeeze the tits of the system. Okay. I charge you basic rent. Above that, you keep. Jack Kroll of Newsweek calls my beautiful laundrette a sharp, sophisticated, funny, sexy, compassionate picture. A delightful surprise in every way. Oh, one thing more. Try and fix him up with a nice girl. I'm not sure his penis is in full working order. What are you doing, boy? It'll be going into profit any day now. Partly because I've hired a bloke of astounding competence and strength of body and mind to look after me. A partnership of young entrepreneurs. A long direct as big as the Ritz. Oh, yes. Faced with racial tension. Why are you working for these people? Packies. It's work, that's why. Don't get too involved with that crook. Where are those two puppies? I don't want my son in this underpants cleaning condition. David Denby of New York Magazine calls it rambunctious, juicy, richly entertaining. My beautiful laundrette is a work of substance. My beautiful laundrette. No Lion Classics release. Hello. Mo uh, welcome to Movie Humpers. I'm Bob Sham. I'm Angela. Uh, the sounds you hear are probably dogs going in and out of the door. <laughs> you can kind of see the hallway behind you. Ew, there. creepy. Yeah, what if something... Sometimes I imagine myself, like if I'm looking in the dark. Yeah. Something like slowly coming into my view. <laughs> peering around the corner and it's all i'm always imagining a small creature or something like that's I, so creepy I, I don't know why i do that to myself but i don't either because that would scare the like shit i'll be me. in the basement and i'll look into a corner where it's completely dark and mm -hmm. just imagine like something just walk out of that corner i love watching scary movies i love being scared in that way but i am never doing that on purpose like i'm never trying to scare myself in our house i used to have to check corners so this is the last day oh yeah in which businesses will acknowledge that you're gay so tomorrow they're going to take all that rainbow stuff they're going to take it all down all the posters all the the signs we're never going to talk about there's we're going to make sure there are no gay people in any movie we discuss until next june <laughs> That's going to be impossible. You know, because the, movies are always gay. You got a point. As we've said, uh, I guess we've taken this month's theme, which is our most successful month theme yet. We've done a lot. Yeah, we've gone yeah. real gay here. Yeah. In this country, everything has to be acknowledged through some bullshit marketing. Like, you can't lift anything up without cynically trying to make a buck off of it. Right. And that's always going to be annoying, but I've tried to em embrace pride in the, in the sense of that it's making the hose mad. Mm. It, people will walk into a, will record themselves losing their mind, walking into a target, looking at like a rainbow display. And let's be honest, that's funny. Watching people that fucking fragile, that is funny. So I got to give it up to pride for at least bringing us that if it's going to be a cynical cash grab then at least it's making the hose mad i think it's also very telling because i believe it was actually target that took down all their pride stuff because they were worried about the backlash their employees were going to get and to me that's like fuck you guys i was in a target and there was some pride things i mean it wasn't like maybe everywhere certain locations but there or was something. there was some it did seem a little toned down yeah it might it might have been in certain regions and i could be getting some of those facts wrong but i know that kind of thing happened this year because there's been such like a stupid backlash going on across the country right now oh there there were there has been literally until very recently 
it's been really difficult for country music folks to come out as queer. Yeah, yeah. And there are some folks kind of coming up now that are and are open about it. But there's even some of them that kind of went away and are just now coming back because they kind of like pulled away from the backlash they got. Like, it's fucking stupid. Maybe someday it'll be safe for Alan Jackson to come out of the closet. Folks, movies are gay. (laughs) And this is it. The last day of movies are gay. We, We really successfully did it this month with the theme. It was a little shaky with our themes at first. Michael Mann helped us write the ship. Yeah, it did. And then shit got gay, and then we stayed gay. Uh, the Flash wasn't gay, though I probably would have called it gay when I was a teenager in the 90s. Not because yeah. it was literally gay, but because that was the insult that we didn't understand we were saying all the time. Oh, sure. The burrito you're eating is gay? That was the 90s. So dumb. Good. Don't you just want to go back to that time? No, not at all. <laughs> But, you know, this movie that we're discussing, My Beautiful Laundrette, it's a Stephen Frears movie. Yeah. uh, Who's kind of prolific in the British filmmaking scene, considered a a quality director. It's written by a guy named Hanif Kirishi. Mm -hmm. And this has been a stage show. This was initially a movie, and I think it was a stage show over the years in uh, England. England. I wondered if it had been a play. And it stars Gordon Warnke and... Daniel Day-Lewis, who this is considered his first feature breakout role. He was in some things coming up. A bit player, not the main player. Sure. And this one, he finally had something he could throw his acting chops out there and get noticed. And now this guy is, like, legitimately considered one of the best actors going today. He was great in this. And I think this movie also benefits from the fact that, though it does deal with Themes we've been discussing all month long, specifically themes in class. This movie never loses its lighthearted charm yeah. in spite of going through the very real issues. And after watching Fox and his friends and fucking Mysterious Skin. Mysterious Skin, like I'm at at the climax when the movie when you know the movie's ending, I'm I'm bracing to like yeah. are his uh, racist friends gonna beat him and his friend to death? Yeah. And thank God it doesn't happen. And I think I'm going to rate this movie quite high. Yes. But maybe it's just because we watched some real sad shit. And this one is genuinely like a charming romantic comedy. Yeah. And from and with, 1980- with a happy ending. From fucking 1985. Yeah. Yeah. With a happy ending. I mean, not everything is perfect. Far from it. No. But the people are together and you know they're going to be okay movie also felt different and i think it's just like british stage actors just chewing on the scenes you know and and when we first meet omar he's a pakistani second generation pakistani his father who was uh apparently uh, wrote some books he was like a, he's a poet well they yeah he's point. a poet a leftist author yeah uh he sends his son to go work for his uncle who's a lot more entrepreneur minded so you got this you got you got the capitalists and the leftists right mm-hmm. here, and Omar, the son of the leftists, uh, he's being sent to work with his uncle because maybe he can learn something about something. And Dad says he's tired of watching him push a broom around the house. Yeah, and for for the first like five minutes of this movie, Omar says no words. He's just kind of smiling. He's approaching things with the utmost confidence. He he meets his uncle, and he shows so much promise immediately because he wants to be put in a higher position he's like okay i've got a laundromat a laundrette as they called it over there they should call them laundrettes here too i know it's so charming i we would we would sell off if they called them laundrettes we'd sell off our washer and dryer and go to to (laughs) if they were the like the one in this one not movie not when you not when you start it looked like when you started that's it was literally like plywood (laughs) yeah that's like what we already have but if if they did the fancy one like he did end up making this into hell yeah go there so omar uh one night when he's driving like some uncles around and there's he also had there's another guy who i forget his name salim salim he's like an uncle right he works He's not an he's uncle, like, he's but they kind of a, call everybody uncle. He, he's like a gangster. He works with the uncle. Yeah. They're kind of like partners. They're kind of like... And he's a money man. 
Yeah, yeah. So apparently they say at some point that like he basically really owns everything that is the uncles because he has he's the one with the money. But yeah, he's kind of like the second to the uncle, but he seems to be more in charge. He's he's got a crooked vibe. Yes, he is definitely a crook. And so one night Omar sees uh Daniel Day Lewis, I forget the character's name, Johnny. Johnny. And Johnny's rolling with these nationalist Group, like posse they're they're straight up fascist racist they wear racist gear and johnny's just kind of rolling with them so omar kind of their leader omar with all the confidence he's displayed walks right in the middle of these guys and he's like johnny like they knew each other from yeah, childhood like, me they used to run around together when they were kids johnny uh, omar essentially is like i'm running this laundrette come come call me up come, i have some ideas come work with me yeah so they're building this up. They're making this work. These This racist group is kind of like, they're talking shit, but they're not really going away. And sometimes and at one point they start helping. Yeah. At one point they start actually like helping to hang the signs up for the yeah. laundrette. Well, because they want Johnny to not do this. They want him to come fuck off with, off with them. But I think once they realize that he's not going to, they just don't want to be without him. Mm -hmm. either so they're like well i guess we fucking hang on this corner now yeah yeah well johnny does this work and johnny of course you were kind of impatient when we were watching this <laughs> I did. movie there was the point where I was you like, where's like, the gay stuff you're like where's the gay stuff i was very happy when it got there and then and then it was very gay well but here's what was so wonderful about it is there was not a lead up to it it was unspoken and you could tell that these two guys like cared about each other and i mean i knew it was a queer film so obviously i thought they were going to get together but what i loved was that it wasn't like it was the first time or a new thing or one of them had to be like put his hand on his hand to see if it was cool they just were like straight up they're fucking yeah they're like they came together pretty hard y yeah they and, did and so the, <laughs> so the themes here are like we're dealing with multiple layers of class we're in the margaret thatcher era of England. England. Mm -hmm. Margaret Thatcher, essentially the Iron Lady, uh, are their, reference her a lot. their equivalent of Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Margaret Thatcher also had declared that homosexuality was a mental illness. They're torn, like uh, Omar's father, who's kind of got this Willy Wonka's grandpa vibe in he the sense get that out of bed. he's like sick, but he doesn't, but he can seem to like walk around when he needs to. He, 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 he does look very pale. You got these white nationalist gang racist kids and their leader is a gay boy who they don't know they is don't gay know, yeah he he doesn't we really don't think they know he doesn't display any racism it just seems like he wants people to hang around with then they're they're constantly like why are you working for this guy these people should be working for us right and then you got the pakistanis who like have a love-hate relationship with england because you know england occupied these areas there there are imperialist daddies right mm -hmm. they come to this country and they're trying to make it work but they're not treated like everyone else and but they also thrive by being as cutthroat as they were against them what we were just talking about yeah so there's like a this push and pull and then of course and omar is being pushed and pulled within his own pakistani traditions mm -hmm. everyone's kind of westernized but at the same time, there's still some expectations that he's going to go work for the family. That he's going he's to marry going to get his married. uncle's daughter. Yeah, and we meet her, he's Tanya. She And she's a hottie, and too. she's a hottie, but... Gross. Tanya was a really good role in this movie. And I was looking, and she didn't really do much that was much bigger than this. Hmm. I was like, wow, she she really kind of killed that particular she really role. Did. She really did. So at one point, Johnny... He's kind of accepted as a heavy because they know he's a street thug by Omar's uncle. So Omar yeah. takes Johnny and has Johnny help him kick out this Jamaican dude in a building that he rents out because he's a landlord. Mm -hmm. They kick this Jamaican guy out and Johnny's like, how are you? How does that look doing yeah, that do to someone looks? with an, to another brown skinned man? And Omar's uncle's like, there's no racism in free enterprise. Equal opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Shitting on everyone. He, yeah. So, and he lets Johnny stay in the flat that he helped. For free. Uh, yeah. To be basically. Run the super. building. Run yeah. the building. Yeah. He can stay there for free if he'll do that. You know, there's also this bit about, I wonder how much of him like embracing Johnny is partly, I don't know if any of it's due to the dad 
not embracing Johnny, but the dad doesn't like Johnny because when they were young, the dad helped Johnny a lot. Johnny apparently, I guess, didn't have a good home life. They never get into how he helped him, but he helped him and they were friends. Years later, he saw him, there was a parade and Johnny was marching with the um, the, fascists. the fascists, yeah. They made eye contact and it like broke almost Omar's father's heart because that he was teaching, he was basically trying to teach all these boys to love everyone, right? Like his his leftist philosophy of like, it doesn't matter, no one's better than anyone else, blah, blah, blah. When you're a leftist, your mortal enemy is a fascist. Like, Yeah. It's odd because like you said, Omar is always so happy and he always seems to want to be like everywhere he is, but he also like really wants money. Omar, like he, he really wants to be successful. He really wants to like prove himself. He doesn't want to go to school because he wants to like have a business. He seems more like his uncle than his dad. He really does. By far. Absolutely. And he doesn't seem afraid. There's a part where he goes against Salim. He's supposed to be picking up things for him. Like Salim's moving drugs. Mm -hmm. And he wants uh, Omar to go pick them up for him. And he and Johnny basically steal them and give basically an empty package an empty beard yeah to to salim and it was so odd to me like the ballsiness to show up to someone's house with an empty package that's worth like probably a hundred thousand dollars and you don't think you're gonna get like well he played beat up or something he plays least, dumb he plays he dumb does play dumb but he does salim does not like believe him for a second no. but they use that money to help set up the laundrette and they hang this sign yes. because the cocaine or drugs look like little laundry laundry packets detergent packets and so Teeny -weeny. Th the sign that they put up looks like one of those little cocaine packets like dumping and laundry detergent powders 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 yeah. laundrette um it is funny too because then he threatens him and he basically is like how did you afford this you owe me my money. I need a down payment by the Christmas party or I'm going to kill you or whatever he says to him. And Omar like busts his butt. They actually like steal some stuff to like be able to give this money to Salim because they don't want to be in big trouble. But then Salim, when he hands Salim the money, he goes, I didn't want the money. I was teaching you a lesson. You yeah. did like your family. I'm not going to fucking hurt yeah, you. If I'm you also, need, if you money, need money, you ask me. me for money. If you had needed money for this, I would have just given it to you if you'd yeah. asked me for it. The, so then he keeps that money too. This, this is so interesting with this movie because you think that there's going to be this serious drama, this serious subplot. Yeah. And then when it, when he comes back and he finally makes good on his money, the, the Salim is like, that's not what this is about. No. As much as there's like th this commentary on class divisions and multiple layers in English society and the ups and downs of accepting your life in an English society and accepting your life as a gay man or not a gay man, as a Pakistani man, as a white man, and like what it means to be in a family mm -hmm. that makes business together, like it covers all these bases, but the movie does not get too big for beyond its own charm. Yes. And we were talking about this when we were talking about the Flash movie. How when we brought up the early Superman movies, Margot Kidder, Christopher Reeve. Yeah. They got charm. They have chemistry. It helps define that movie. It's what makes you grab onto those characters. And really, I think what a lot of what we're missing in so many modern movies that we do see today, especially in superhero movies and beyond, is that charm chemistry amongst yeah. these characters yeah is it am i crazy or have you noticed that like the charm seems to be like either non-existent or forced yes like there's a genuine charisma that we used to do like in movies going back over a half a century it was the most important thing is there something about like the way uh people are coming up now people are living more emotionally isolated lives with the ability of the internet we go on we project our what we believe our character or what we want to be into a social media internet landscape mm -hmm. but it's like it's it's insincere it's it's posturing it's performative mm -hmm. we are people losing the ability to kind of be around each other and be 
and to discover what they can like about each other? Are they so bogged down with what they perceive as their opposition that yeah. they can't even reach out and to, uh, and find a humanity in other people to find a genuine connection? Do we not even know? Because I, I've been thinking about this a lot since the flash, because that is what's missing in these superhero mm -hmm. movies, charm yeah. and, and charisma. I, I, I hear you and I think, I think you're correct. I also think the other thing is, is that the focus now is more on what special effects can we do? Who's dead that we can make look like they came back to life? What story are we telling that's this big story? The focus is not on the relationships. Before we had CGI and all that bullshit, like you have to be a little more grounded, right? Like even if you're telling a horror story or a sci-fi story, and when we do see modern movies that are about relationships, it they're like usually really sad, but it's refreshing. Props to Stephen Frears, mm -hmm. who made a a beautifully, a beautiful, charming movie. It was. It really was a genuine romantic comedy that felt good, and I was so relieved. They're setting all these guys up for to go onto a path. Omar and Johnny, they have like, they have their own racial and class divisions themselves, mm -hmm. but they are still dedicated to each other despite how, you know, Omar can be so cold about business, but they do love each other. So there's this, there's this one point where uh, Omar's father is asking Johnny to talk him into going to college. Yes, he basically is like, he doesn't need to stay here and be with you and fucking wash clothes. You need to tell him to leave. And so you kind of think like, Maybe that's going to happen. He wants him to white fang him. Yeah, he want white fang my son so he can go off to college. And you assume that they would split and Johnny would fuck off down the street. Go back with his friends. Be in his low class self. When we get to the other side of it all. Yeah. When the conflict, the small minute conflicts and we're all just. And they're all just dealing with living this life in an England, an England that is becoming more and more multicultural. Mm -hmm. They all kind of just settle back into place together. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't appear that Omar does go to, off to college. No. It doesn't appear like Johnny does fuck off with his no. friends. Well, you know, there's, there's this scene, and I do want to just for a second talk about the crazy witchcraft shit that happens. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there's this whole thing where the uncle who is so in love with England and capitalism is dating a white woman. Yeah. Um, he has a mistress and there's some really good, there's a really good moment between his daughter and that woman where the Natalia is like, I don't care that you're fucking my dad. I don't care that my dad's cheating on my mom. I don't care that you're doing this or that or the other, but you're a fucking leech. Yeah. And so that's what I don't respect about you. And I was like, this movie. This is for but but then she turns around because set to be arranged to be married to Omar. And she mm -hmm. tells Omar, she's like, you're just going to have to support me for like a while. Yeah, she's basically like, I'm leaving my dad's and you have to give me money. And so she's kind of the same thing that she says she hates. Yes. But because she's trying to get away from her dad who's supporting her, so she's just going to go make this other man support her. Also, yeah. there's a weird kind of thing that happens where she and Johnny are very close as well. And you kind of wonder... It's almost like she loves both of them. Yeah. And you get that she gets it without ever saying that she knows they're together. She knows there's something between them that she can never get between. Yeah, she recognizes that before everyone else. Yeah. But it's, I love it too because they don't say it. She doesn't confront them. It's just in her face. Like you just know that she knows. Did you kind of think they were going to end up being a throuple? Yes. I did think there might have been. I thought she at least might try this to make that This movie is already happen. ahead of its time. That would have been fiercely ahead of its because time. She was just very sexual. She was. And and she played it perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you know, so there's this, there's this mistress happening. And, you know, um, around about the time where... Johnny has said he'll marry the girl, but she hasn't left yet. They haven't done that. I'm mean, not Johnny. Sorry. Omar, Omar right. said he's going to marry the girl. Um, you know, his dad already asked Johnny to have him leave. And then because the mistress came to the opening of the laundrette, the mom knows because she hears all the conversations, but she just doesn't think about it. Right. But then it's kind of like in her face. And so she starts doing like potions and incantations apparently and like causes the mistress to get like a rash 
and the furniture in our house to be moving all around. And I was like, okay, now this is a sci-fi movie. Yeah, they, there's like a, a very minute subplot where a curse has happened to this mistress. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is because, you know, Johnny's looking for Omar and he's like, why'd you make me come all the way to this house? And he's like, because man, it's crazy over here. And he's like, this. T he's telling him that all these things are happening. And like in the background, I just love this shot. In the background, you see out on the patio, the mother mixing up some shit and Tanya's sitting with her, kind of trying to be like, Let's call your sister. The mom's talking about, I'm going back to Pakistan. Like, I'm leaving, whatever, after I, like, torture this woman, however long. And they're talking, and it's like, he Johnny looks at Omar, and he's like, are you still getting married? And Omar's like, well, I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. And he's like, well, what do you want, though? Like, out of all of this? Like, are you going to school? Are you getting married? Like, what do you want? And Omar just looks at him, and he's like, I want you. I kind of, at that point, was afraid that it might be that he did still marry Tanya. Yeah. And they were being a secret. But I don't believe that now anymore after the end. I mean, there is kind of this, like, terrible climax where Omar wants to basically get two other laundrettes from another one of those so, yeah, so, mob yeah, yeah. family guys. And Salim's there. And Salim says something to the boys at some point. Like, he like basically lets them know that he knows that they're fucking. Yeah. Right? So he kind of has this thing on them. And they're driving around... And Salim sees Johnny's friends, the young nationalists, and he decides to run them over with his car. Yeah, and Johnny and Omar in the car. Runs over on one's foot. He runs over the guy whose name, oh God, what was it? He had a great name. It was uh, like G uh, Genghis. Genghis, yeah. Yeah, they called him Genghis. And so he hits him and breaks his leg. And then so later you see him kind of walking around with a, with a cast on, but they don't know Johnny was in the car, but now Johnny hates Salim, right? Because yeah. he just ran these kids over. And... So they're in the laundromat waiting to do this deal, and the kids see Salim, and they and they're beating up his car. You know what's interesting here is, yeah, they beat on the Cars car, matter a lot, in and then detail. and then they beat up, start beating up Salim, and Johnny, he's like he he's torn for a second. Well, he's not torn, no, because Johnny knows Salim has a certain amount of this coming. Oh, you sure. ran over this guy's foot, so you're going to take some a little bit of a beating. Yes, yes. But Johnny is just making sure that they don't kill Celine. Right, so he kind of tries to come in and be like, that's enough. Because Yeah, okay, just, I feel that. It's just law of the jungle. You break his leg, they're going to collectively kick the shit out of you, but I'm going to make sure he doesn't you kill don't you. don't die. Uh, so yeah, but then they turn on Johnny. And they're yeah. like, why are you trying to protect this guy? Yeah, why are you Why are you even here? Why are you hanging with these Why packies? is all this happening? They're why are you being to be, loyal to them? They're supposed to be our servants. Exactly. And and you're our friend. So mm. what the fuck are you doing? And so they beat up Johnny pretty bad. And then Omar comes. Mm. And Omar gets in the fray too, but it breaks up. Yeah. It, it breaks up at that point. And, you know, they go inside the laundrette and Johnny's like, I'm fucking leaving. I don't yeah. want to do this anymore. And then, and then Omar is like kind of cleaning off his wounds, and then they kind of start splashing each other in the sink, and they smile at each other, and you just kind of know that like they're gonna be fine no matter what they have to go through because they've already been through all this, you know. Like they're gonna stay together, they're gonna be together. It doesn't make sense any other way. And that's pretty much where it ends. Like, yeah. like these guys are gonna run this laundrette together. They're in love. They're gonna get two more. They're gonna make a whole city of beautiful laundrettes. They why don't they make why isn't there a British sitcom called My Beautiful Laundrette about a gay couple? One a Pakistani son of immigrants, one like a fucking street hoodlum that are together running a laundrette. Mm -hmm. Like that would be a great They show. should bring Tanya in as like a third. They can each kind of manage one. They could do it. It could happen. It'd be great. Uh, very charming movie. Very fun. A lot of scene chewing. There's a part where uh, uh, Omar's uncle and his mistress come in and they're like dancing around. Oh, yeah. While Omar and Johnny are like literally, there's like a two-way mirror and they're like fucking behind the two-way mirror. Mm -hmm. And they don't notice until like the last possible second. I like your motion that for they're, fucking. That, <laughs> this is how you do it, right? You kind of do it like this, right? Right. And then they don't notice that their uncle is there until like the last minute. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's very, I, I really, I really liked this movie. I did too. I really did. That's good. Well, let's, you want to hump it? Yeah. You, uh, you give this one through five. I'll give it one through five combined for best out of 10. I'm just so grateful that this wasn't sad. Me too. We really needed just like a, a nice, charming 
charismatic gay rom com, yeah. and we got it in 1985. Check we it out. It. I'm thinking 4.25. That's where I'm feeling. It's definitely a four, but I do kind of want to give it that little that little extra nudge because of how because of how it was uplifting. I'm gonna give it a four point five. Okay. I just thought it was just a fun movie. Yeah. So that combined, that is uh, eight point seven five. That's a solid A. We call that an easy A. Eight point seven five. That's actually the same score we gave Mysterious Skin. Oh wow! Now Mysterious Skin kind of has something very unique about it. I would say that this movie is also very unique as yeah. well. It's hard to say. Would you say My Beautiful Laundrette is better than Mad God? Yes. Easier to sit through. More lighthearted. Yes. So, is it better than Fox and his friends? I'm going to say yes. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. Is it better than Mysterious Skin? Fuck. I still, like, even talking about rating Mysterious Skin, like, still feels weird and wrong to me. Yeah. Um, I don't want to answer <laughs> No comment. I don't know. Uh, what Mysterious do you think? Mysterious skin feels like it should be shown in like psychology class. Yes. Yes. 1,000. 1,000. Human right. sexuality classes. We're going to put it between Mysterious Skin and Fox in this Okay. Place. And that's fair. Daniel Day-Lewis had orange hair in this movie. Or yellow. It was like so bright. So there you go. I'll show it right there. Awesome. My beautiful laundrette falls between Mysterious Skin and Fox and his friends. All the gay movies seem to be lumping together here. Uh, <laughs> the two spots up is My Own Private Idaho, Tangerine, and Bride of Frankenstein. We hit the A tiers a lot this month. Yeah, we did. Four. Movies are gay. Movies are gay. And now we say goodbye. But movies will always be a little gay. Yes. Movies will always be a little gay. Yes. But our theme coming up, oh, starting yeah. next week, it's a double theme. Strange romance, strange summer romance, and catching up. Yes. So we're going to see some movies about weird relationships, weird romances, and we're going to catch up on some prestige, some big word of mouth movies that we missed in 2022. So we're finally going to get to everything everywhere all at once. We're going to watch Tar. Okay. We're going to watch... After Sun, I'm finally going to watch Meet the Fablemans, that Steven Spielberg right, movie. Right, right. I'm actually really kind of pumped about that from what I've heard about it. Yeah. And as far as like the strange relationship movies, oh boy, we got some heavy hitters. Check the show notes for links and where to find us. Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors.